It is indeed significant that the feast we celebrate today is that of St. Augustine. St. Augustine was a towering figure, not only in the early Christendom, but also in the scholarly community of his days. As a lawyer, I have been a deep admirer of his thinking and legal philosophy. Together with St. Aquinas, St. Thomas Augustine represented the forerunners of early legal philosophers in the world, and their thinking and juristic ideas have shaped the principles of law and natural law in particular. Therefore, as a lawyer, I'm speaking about someone who represents a huge figure in my life. I'm honored and privileged to have attended the school and endowed in his honor. Now, devoting this feast and lecture to him, therefore, seemed a most natural way of not only remembering the theology but also his philosophical insights and deep learning. It is not by accident that Neck has chosen to speak about education. Education involving St. Augustine's College, a redefinition of education in light of the person in respect of whom the school is named. Yet this topic seems even more relevant for the man and the moment. For the man, it vindicates his deep passion of education and refinement of the mind. This seems to have been his life's quest and remains imprinted on the philosophies and theology of St. Augustine. In terms of the moment, the topic forces us to reflect on a continuing topic of our time, namely education. A country's development is a function of the quality of its education. For education refines the mind and the cerebral hygiene, as some will refer to it. Cerebral hygiene depicts that education equally purifies the soul. Indeed, that was the motivation of some person. I begin. Education as management. Management of schools is everything there is to a school. Managers craft an educational agenda, implement policy, and steer schools in the direction of attaining a defined goal. Managers inspire leadership in students and synchronize the efforts of teachers, administrators, and students. The importance of managers in a school cannot be overemphasized. For management makes a school by driving an agenda of education and human development, education as infrastructure. Closely related to this is the variable of infrastructure and my second factor of education as infrastructure. Like all, major other, like all other major enterprises, successful educational systems or models must be carried out within the context of appropriate infrastructural support. Infrastructure, defined to include logistics, is the very life wire of the school system. Providing classrooms, dormitories, logistics, social activity spaces, including sports and entertainment, commensurate with the training of the mind and body is essential for the successful training of students. Mr. Chairman, speaking of education as a commodity is perhaps the most important of the laws of what education represents. Today's world economy is fundamentally a place of knowledge. We live in a knowledge economy and more than two-thirds of the top ten billionaires in the world today well self-made, not by producing goods, but by selling things made of knowledge. The greatest commodity of our time is knowledge, and education is the vehicle for that knowledge. In order to enhance the prospect of developing and truly commoditizing education, there needs to be a supportive environment to match. Teachers must be creative and innovative, and must inspire creativity in students. Unfortunately, our school systems have often been stifling in their teaching and learning, and academic conformity has been prized over rebellion. Many of us have gone to school and we have been taught 
to listen carefully to the teacher and to write what he's telling us. We have been taught to read some books and to reproach. In fact, the current model of education, which is tested by the West African Exam Council, follows that model. That says, after being in school for so many years, we're going to test you across a period of three hours, and God be with you. That model tests the ability to remember. It tests memory and ignores creativity. Albert Einstein therefore says that education is what remains after one has forgotten what he has learned in school. This is deep. In other words, you really start becoming educated when you stop following things you were taught in school.